Welcome to Deb's Big Backyard, and I'm in my front yard. This is my native garden. It's taken me three years to put together, and now with the recent installation of the prairie drop seed, I have a four season sustainable garden that over the winter feeds the birds. I'm really excited about that. Just as excited as I am to go over to Cheney Mansion in just a few minutes to get a tour um, put on by the Wild Ones and Green Community Connections. It's part of an all day tour they're doing and I'm really interested to see what's happening at Cheney. Let's go. Well, I've landed here. Go ahead, Charlie, introduce yourself. I will. Hi, I'm Charlie Riedebusch, and I'm the head gardener here at Cheney Mansion, part of the Park District of Oak Park. And I'm gonna show Deb and you folks a little bit about how you can grow your own uh, native plants in any size yard here in Oak Park. Well, why are we here today, Charlie? What's well, going on? Well, the, this afternoon is Oak Park's Green Living and Learning Tour, and we're a stop along the tour. And as I said, we're gonna show people the ins and outs, some of the, we're gonna explode some myths, and we're gonna talk about growing native plants, why you should do it, and the benefits of it uh, for growing right here in Oak Park. So what do you have? Well, as, as you see, things are looking kind of brown now. It's, it's late September. A lot of the blooming season is done, but there's a, a few things that are still blooming. We have the fall blooming asters, and we have a goldenrod or two. One of the things that I like to say when I show people a native garden, especially at this time of year, you may see brown sticks and kind of flowers that are done already. But what I see is life. I see seed heads for birds to come in and nibble on and make their way through winter. I see the plants in here that are places for butterfly eggs to, to live through the winter. I see little ways for chipmunks and mice and things to nestle through here. This is kind of one of the main reasons that I like to grow native plants is because just the life that it, that it helps promote. The things that are growing here are the kinds of plants that grew all over Illinois for thousands and thousands of years till you know, we came and plowed things under and concreted things over. If you come to a native plant garden, you'll just be wowed by all the critters, all the life that is going on here. And that's, that's one of the huge things that I like to impart about native gardens. So where do grasses play in all of this? Everyone's talking about prairie grasses and the benefits. What, what's sure. up with that? Well, that's one of the, the things that is, is most important to try to convince yourself to do is, is to plant more prairie grasses in, a, in your, your prairie planting than you might want to, than you might um, be, uh, expect to, to do. Mm -hmm. um, a, a very good combination, of, a proportion of prairie grasses to forbs, to prairie flowers, is about 50%. Mm -hmm. And the grasses sort of, they're what does the, the best in keeping the weeds down because most of the prairie grasses will form a tight knot of, of roots, kind of a, almost a sod. Mm -hmm. And after a couple of years, they're going to be your best uh, allies in keeping the weeds down. They'll form kind of a network for the, the, the flowers that you grow kind of help hold them up. You can see some of the plants here, the flowers are getting kind of tall and there's nothing really to hold them up. So if we had a, a thicker uh, network of prairie grasses in here, I think uh, I'd be a happier man right now. So that's one of my take home lessons from having done this. Well, I think so too with prairie gardens are always evolving or as exactly any right. garden is always evolving. Mm -hmm. And so to get to the point where you have the right ratio of grasses to the prairie plants is always an objective for for any gardener. You can always change your garden. That's that's yeah. the prerogative of a gardener. Do you have, if someone doesn't have any prairie plants, do you have any suggestion of three to start with that are easy, easy to grow and Absolutely. they'll get some results to get them in? To Absolutely. The, uh, the, the butterfly milkweed, that's a wonderful starter plant. It's bright, bright orange. You'll notice it from a mile away. It doesn't get very tall. The butterflies just flock to it and uh, the, the seed heads are very cool later on. The, uh, the blazing stars, the, the tall, purple, spiky guys, they're absolutely wonderful, colorful plants. And I like a, a plant that not too many people grow in their gardens. It's called Royal Catchfly. It's uh, deep, deep red and absolutely beautiful. So those will get, if you're into primary colors like I am, those, those are three that will really do it for you. Well, one of the things that I have heard recently about native gardens is really to approach it from the palette that you enjoy. So really choose the colors that you oh, want to sure. see that are your favorite colors and then work from there. What do you think about that? Just like any other uh, garden, there's prairie and native plants that come in, in 
just about any color. And if you absolutely hate orange, by goodness, don't plant <laughs> butterfly milk. We plant other kinds of stuff. But there's, there's so many to choose from. You absolutely can't go wrong. Well, let's take a little walking sure. tour here. Sure. So you can show me what you're going to do when other people arrive. Thanks for the quick peek ahead of time, by absolutely. the way. Absolutely, sure. Well, one of the things, just like designing any garden, you kind of want to make sure that you have plants the size and the type that fit your spot. Here we have a very full sun garden. So we don't have to worry about uh, plants that have to live in, in the shade. These are plants that get full sun almost all day around. And it's about 20 feet by 20 feet, kind of big, but you still don't want to overwhelm it with huge plants. Where are you going to walk? Say the, the very front of the garden, you want to, to have shorter, smaller plants. So we have things like prairie drop seed grass. This is a beautiful, iconic prairie grass. And it's not going to get all that much bigger than this. Some other examples. This guy down here is called a prairie alum root. Oh, cool. It's related to coral bells that people have in their gardens. And it sh throws up a silly flower that might get three feet high, but the plant itself is that more of a small. summer bloomer then, or spring? It, it is a, a, a early summer bloomer, yeah. Okay. Well, then my question is this, that would be mm -hmm. the most helpful for folks. Sure. Um, people who want to have something started up next year, uh, what should they be doing now? Fall is the absolute perfect time to establish, to get a garden going that you're going to be planting next year. You pick out your spot, you decide what kind of sun exposure it has. Is, is, is part of it going to be in the shade of a tree parts of the day? Is it going to be in all sun? So that, that's getting you thinking about the kind of plants that you're going to buy next year. But you, if, it's, if, you, if you have a lawn or an established anything there now, you dig that stuff up now and you prepare the soil in the fall so it gets all winter to uh, mellow out and, and weed seeds can germinate and you can uh, hoe them back down again. So if you get that soil prepared now, it'll be a lot less work for you to starting out your garden in the spring. Okay, another question is where to get native plants? Where locally or should we go on the internet or what should we do? Well, I like to get uh, some of my plants from uh, some of the local fundraising uh, uh, sales in the area. The uh, DuPage County Forest Preserve District has uh, a native plant sale in May that's great. We sometimes go down to the Indiana Dunes. The Friends of the Indi Indiana Dunes has a, a native plant sale. But you can go to uh, uh, Midwest Ground Covers has a, a website that uh, they have uh, lots, a great selection of native plants. But I've noticed that as more and more people are looking to put in native plants in their gardens, you, you'll see this a lot in, in almost all the, the nurseries and uh, garden stores. As we were talking, we were seeing a monarch butterfly flying around here. So that's a good thing to, to see in your garden. We have what's blooming here now. This is a New England aster. And this is a, a wonderful, a tall, tall plant of the Illinois prairie. And bees and butterflies just absolutely love it. Later in the year when the seeds develop, you'll see goldfinches, you'll see all kinds of birds just hanging precariously on the top of, of these uh, stems, eating the seeds out of that. One of my favorite things here, this is a butterfly milkweed. Beautiful bright orange blossoms in the summer. And these are the seeds. You might, if you have kids, this is one of the first the things that you can introduce them to a prairie garden. Just take one of these things and go like this. <laughs> and watch the little ballerinas <laughs> dance and spread their seeds all through the rest of your garden. What a fun thing to, to do. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and it's so pretty in season when it's blooming as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. So what else? What are these tall spiky things? This is called Blazing Star. Yes. And this, if you've seen photos of Illinois prairies, this is one of the, the, the most widespread and most well-known. This is bright, bright purple during the growing season. And again, here you got all these seeds here that the birds are going to become, will perch on here and they will just munch away. Well, point. as far as it goes, the seeds are there. They'll just uh, they'll reseed themselves in your garden space. Or if you wanted to collect them, or is, is it an easy thing to do that you around the time? You can absolutely too? collect them, and I'll f I'll show you. This is a very easy one. In fact, when we have volunteer work days on prairie restoration projects, this is one of the most fun. 
plants to collect. And there, I have now collected the seeds of prairie blazing star. And what would you do with those seeds? We would take, quick put these in a paper bag, not a plastic bag, but something that's, that's going to let any moisture in that um, escape. Mm -hmm. But what I'm going to do is go like that and see what happens next year. Well, that's very exciting. It's part of the mystery of it all. And then I see you have some of the taller ones, which some people fret about whether they want to have a big thing in their mm -hmm. in their front yard or the backyard or, or whatever. What do yep. you say? This is just one of the coolest prairie plants ever. It's called prairie dock. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it has some cousins, some relatives that do tend to get awfully big for a, an Oak Park sized uh, urban or suburban yard. But this this guy, doesn't take up all that much room in the native garden. This is the leaves of the thing. And when we take kids through the gardens, we sometimes call them refrigerator or icebox plants because the roots of these guys go down so deep into the soil. And they're like any plant, they're bringing up moisture from the soil, the soil moisture. And it's a lot cooler. And it's a pretty warm day here today. But if you want to feel those things, why don't you tell me what, what it feels like? Is that cooler oh, than wow. the air? Oh, wow. Yeah, Isn't it's that cool? cooler. Isn't that fun? You know, there's so many things that we can learn from, from the natural plants and um, so many ways that you can, you know, incorporate kids into your garden with them. Oh, kids just absolutely have a ball. If, if, if you've got kids who like to learn about butterflies and bees and bugs and birds, they will absolutely have a ball in, if you plant a native garden here. And, and then finally, uh, Charlie, what's going to happen to all this over winter? We're going to leave this up because uh, one, of the, one of the reasons that I like to grow native plants is, again, to have a place for other critters to live. And butterflies and, and other kinds of bugs are laying their eggs. That's the, that's the thing that's going to live over winter. And um, if you clean out your regular flower gardens mm -hmm. and clean them up just obsessively being tidy. You're not leaving any place for really any anybody, any critter to live. I'm here with Ginger Vandeveer, who is one of the co-founders of the West Cook Wild Ones uh, group that has just formed here. What else are you involved with in Oak Park, Ginger? Um, I like to uh, work at Field Park. It's actually really close to my home, so I'm a steward actually of Field Park, and I uh, I help take care of the native gardens there. What is Wild Ones, what do they want to do here? Well, in Oak Park especially, mm -hmm. but we'd also like to, to keep it moving, you know, yes, across yes. the nation. That the idea is to, to create little habitat, um, a corridor of habitat for some of our major pollinators like bees, butterflies, butterflies, that, well, a lot of people know the bee story. Butterflies, monarchs now, are, we're finding that those numbers are really decimating because of a lot of the stressors that we have in these environments, you know, with lawn and pesticides. And so having a little native patch for them to eat comfortably on, you know, it's been in their ecosystems for thousands and thousands of years. It's something they're familiar with. And so we want to make sure that we have a connected space for them to just flit from one garden to the next and, and be able to have an urban appetite here in Oak Park. And, and how can people get involved with this movement with you, Ginger? Well, it'd be great if they got online, wildones.org, and mentioned us and said they were with the West Cook chapter, if they want to become a member, if they're just becoming interested. And we are giving away seeds, so you can start a garden, you know, this fall or next spring. And we're even working with a, a greenhouse to, to do some native plants and start some seedlings for next spring. So we have lots of ways that people can get involved and start their own gardens, or if they want to come help me in a park, I'm happy to have you. That sounds really great. I, I love my natives, and I'm hoping more people will love them. I'm Deb. This is Ginger. This is Deb's big backyard on the road. See you next time. Bye.